Donald Trump live in Texas. This is the Texas border duel going on right now, ladies and gentlemen. He just got off the plane. Let's take a quick peek. Nice weather, beautiful day, but a very dangerous border. We're going to take care of it. Thank you. <laughs> top priority for Donald Trump, top priority for his campaign Apparently, increasingly a bigger priority for Joe Biden. I'm going to share with you some news from a new Gallup poll, which tells you, you know what, both candidates need to care about this. I have a feeling one does more than the other. We'll talk about that. But I want to begin on the total freakout that's happening over what the Supreme Court might in fact rule. Welcome to the program, everyone. I am Trish Regan. We're brought to you in part by LegacyPMInvestments.com, 1-866-589-0560, 1-866-589-0560, LegacyPMInvestments.com. If you're interested in diversifying your investments, maybe give them a call. Gold is what they specialize in, silver too. Okay, Donald Trump is looking increasingly like he's getting the upper hand here in terms of the courts. I mean, you think about what's going on with Miss Fannie Willis down there. We can talk about that in a bit. You think about how Illinois is coming out trying to forbid him from being on the ballot. We know, I think, how the Supreme Court's going to rule on that one. They gave us every indication with Colorado just by listening to the oral arguments and the questioning there. And now we're getting a sense, at least if you listen to the hysteria, and I mean hysteria, in the left-wing media, we're getting the sense that, you know what? The Supreme Court might just say, indeed, a president is immune from criminal prosecution while he is in office. This has, of course, been what Donald Trump has maintained because Jack Smith's case was trying to insist that somehow he was trying to subvert the rule. He was conspiring to subvert American democracy. And he's saying, no, 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 no. This is a politically charged situation, two sides to this, et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, I have immunity as president. So the Supreme Court has now said they will decide this. And this has thrown everything into disarray because you know what? Jack Smith was hoping we'd already be in a trial by now. He was hoping he could peg this whole thing on Trump. He'd be going up in flames and that would be the end of it. But instead, the way this has all worked out has seemingly been in Donald Trump's favor. And so you can just see the left right now. I mean, it's happening in real time. They're freaking out, they're freaking out, they're freaking out. One after another. I got some really interesting stuff to show you. Let's start with Queen Leftist over at State Media Run, MSNBC. That would be Rachel Maddow, who's like hyperventilating. You can feel her panic. She's trying to convince you that if the Supreme Court rules like she thinks they might, which would be in Trump's favor, then, oh my gosh, he's never going to leave office. Watch her. If you think about the, the court, as the Supreme Court of the United States and a rational actor and a decent one, that was a reasonable supposition, and it just turns out they're not that. Um, you'll, you know, incremental bit of progress here. The important question here is not whether the Supreme Court is going to decide that Donald Trump and all presidents are immune from prosecution for things they commit, crimes they committed while they were president. I mean, it would be fully insane for them to actually side with Trump here, right? The conclusion that we can arrive at now based on what they have done without having to wait for the ruling is that they are ensuring that Trump will not face trial. And when they inevitably rule that presidents aren't immune from prosecution after they leave office, what that will tell Donald Trump, if by then he is president, is that he can never leave the office of the presidency. Right. And if he is voted out in 2028, he cannot leave office and he is willing to com he, is, he is welcome to commit any crimes he wants to as long as he is still president in order to ignore the result of that election and stay in power for life, because otherwise he is going to go to prison when he gets out. We're talking real crazy talk. They got lots of crazy talk going on. 
there at MSNBC. And, and she's, she's, by the way, the cheerleader and leader of it all. This is the lady who kept pushing the steel dossier as like it was fact when the whole thing was misinformation. Opposition research bought and paid for by the Hillary Clinton campaign. Anyway, Rachel Maddow is, is having a meltdown. She's freaking out. She's like, oh my gosh, I can't. Because by the way, the whole timing is now off because guess what? They don't get to have Donald Trump on trial for a coup or whatever it is that they're trying to go after him with. They don't get to do that. They had it all perfectly worked out, right? They were going to have him on trial and that was going to actually... There was no way that he could possibly win the presidency again, and yet now she's trying to prepare everyone for, gosh, could he win it again? Here's the thing on the immunity, right? I mean, if you really break this down, you really, really think about it. If a president doesn't have immunity, then what happens if there's a drone attack that is launched to take out some bad actors and there's some kind of mistake that goes down. Could you actually go after the president for that? I mean, heck, didn't that happen to Joe Biden over in Afghanistan? Weren't they trying to take out one person and they actually wound up taking out the wrong guy in a minivan over in the Middle East? I mean, is, is the president to be held responsible for that? I mean, there's some really interesting questions that you can ask here from a legal perspective, but they're interpreting it like, oh my gosh, you know, he could just do something really heinous, really drastic, he, he, he could hurt his wife, this, that, the other. I don't even like to say the things that they're talking about, but this is where they're going, and they're saying, oh, and he could do this with no actual implication of any penalty because he's the president. No, it, it's not quite like that. It's not quite like that. You see, we have this thing called the Constitution, and we do have the 25th Amendment, which enable the vice president and Congress to take out the president in the event the president does something really, really, really heinous like that. So this is nuanced, but they don't want you to think that way. Nope, nope, nope. Here's, oh, you want to talk about lack of nuance. Whoopi Goldberg over on The View, spinning her nonsense about this, her fear, her terror that somehow Donald Trump has the upper hand with the Supreme Court. Watch. Well, the Supreme Court won't hear oral arguments until the end of April. Now, I just, you know, just let's look at a scenario where the Supreme Court says, yes, he has that. He has all those rights. He is immune from everything. Yeah. You know what Joe Biden could do since he is presently president? What? Whoa. <laughs> he could throw every Republican in jail. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. mean, he could. I mean, no, 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 no. This is not because a good thing. Totally because he'd have Did eligibility. I actually hear go, applause? He, what this means is it's uh -huh. he could do anything. Yeah. He could dismiss everybody's debt. Yeah. You know, there's a whole bunch of great stuff that could happen, but let's let's really look at what this means. Yeah. So if, that so they're basically mm -hmm. kicking the can down the road, though. They they're not taking up this case immediately. Right. So what's right. their motivation then? If they if we all know that we they can't do what you just said because right. of the extreme power that a president would have, right. what is their motivation for not doing it right away? Well, unfortunately, some people are saying the motivation <coughs> is that there are certain conservative justices that have been appointed by Trump that want to help him. And because we know the end result is if this case is not resolved by the time uh, of the election and he, God forbid, becomes the president of the United States, poo -poo. The, the Justice Department policy is that you cannot indict nor put on trial a sitting president, right? And so it's his get out of he jail. He could throw him in jail. It's, but it's his get out of jail free card. No, no, I'm saying Biden could throw. Yeah, See, they're, they're, Biden this is a that. slippery slope know, but because if they if they give him this immunity, but what what's good for the good. What I also is good will say Biden. is they're yeah. they're listening to these arguments in April. The end of their term is in June, right? Oh, right they return right. again, in, I believe, in October. The Bush v. Gore case happened real quick. Mm -hmm. Do you remember well, that? The Supreme do, Court how knows this. how to work yeah. real fast. That was the day democracy died. You know, this is just tragic that we have people like this commenting on such sophisticated topics, is it not? I mean, the, the, whether they're stupid or whether there's a method to the madness, I have a feeling that Whoopi Goldberg is not as stupid 
as she looks and that there's entirely a method to the madness. And they are very much trying to spin this to put people into this state of fear and hysteria. I mean, you heard about what she, she says, oh, you know, Donald Trump's going to be the next reincarnation of Hitler and lock up gays and this, that, and the other. I mean, this is crazy talk, people, absolutely crazy talk. But somehow she must think that little of her audience that they're actually going to buy it. And you get this one over on MSNBC talking about, well, echoing some of the things that we just heard from The View, that the justices are there just trying to do their buddy a favor, that they really don't have any backbone or any real conservative belief. They're, quote, Republicans. He says that like a dirty word. But they're Republicans implying that they're just pure political animals and they are going to do whatever they can to protect Donald Trump. Watch him here if you can. <laughs> then the appeals court gives a bulletproof ruling, as Dahlia says, and they still decide to take it up. What it says is that they are cor corrupted political actors who act in bad faith. The reason why people like Mark and people like Dahlia seem to have a crystal ball is because they're real because they're realists and they understand the court for what it is. And at some point, people in the media, people at home, and people sitting in the White House have to stop pretending that the Supreme Court is some kind of benign, trying to do its best institution and start to realize that there are six Republicans, not conservatives, Republicans on the Supreme Court who view it as their job to help the Republican Party. And until we do something about that, until we take away that power, until we draw the line on them there, they will continue to do this. They will help Trump, they will take away abortion rights, they will end affirmative action, they will liberalize gun rights. They will do all of it until we stop them. And somebody, somebody needs to start listening in the higher echelons of the Democratic Party because we will keep losing every day we allow these six republicans in robes to rule over all of us where he's going with this he wants to stack the court right hugo chavez style what's the first thing chavez did as soon as he became president this would have been around sometime around the year 2000 he went in and he stacked the court that's what this guy's talking about doing because he doesn't like the fact that there's that many conservatives there on the bench Wow. I mean, such little faith, clearly, in the American system. But that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to actually rip away any faith that you might have in this great nation. They're doing it bit by bit by bit. There was the MSNBC lady just the other day who was saying, can you believe, can you believe that some of these conservatives actually believe that they have God-given rights? I mean, hey, sorry. That was the founding father's line, right? You're your unalienable rights given to you by God. But somehow they want to tear that away too because everything's going to come from the state and they've got to be the ones to actually decide what you get, what you don't get. Here's Nancy Pelosi weighing in on the issue as well, tweeting out, quote, the Supreme Court is placing itself on trial with its decision to hear the former president's total immunity claim. It remains to be seen whether the justices will uphold the fundamental American value that no one is above the law, not even a former president. So this is wild, guys, okay? What they are trying to say is that actually Congress has no ability. The vice president has no ability by way of the 25th Amendment. I mean, I have to keep this thing handy these days. You know, you're consulting it almost daily. But there it is. I mean, <laughs> they absolutely, if the president is considered to be in such a state as not being able to do his or her job, then the vice president and Congress will work together to assume the powers and duties of the office of the acting president. I mean, this is the, and, and, but yet they've got to get this, 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 I don't know what through as well. Look, Donald Trump as a president, this has never come up before, by the way, I just want to preface this by saying this is completely uncharted legal territory because we've never been in this banana republic kind of zone, right? We've kind of always been a little bit more civilized until, well, somebody decided to fight back. You got one guy who's like, I'm going to fight back against Barack Obama's machine that tried to take me down. Matt Taib is reporting new allegations 
that Obama's CIA actually targeted 26 people that were associated with the Donald Trump campaign back in 2016, arranged bump-in meetings in coordination with five different intelligence agencies all around the globe so that they could get more information. I mean, this is really kind of bizarre stuff. You got the Carter Page situation where they were tapping his phone over at Trump Tower. Who does this? Do we not have bigger fish to fry? Do we not actually have real concerns to be concerned about? Do we have to get so bogged down in politics? Well, that's where we are right now, unfortunately. And Adam Schiff and a bunch of others here, Swalwell, remember him? What was the name of that girl? You know, the Chinese spy he took up? Fang Fang. <laughs> Adam Schiff, who had Eric Swalwell right behind him the other day when he was talking, well, he went on and did this interview with CNN, and he's trying to just make sure that, you know, he, he's got a, another run at the Schiff Show. He's selling tickets, ladies and gentlemen. The superstar of the Schiff Show, Adam, saying we're going to keep this thing going and going and going and going. Watch. Will you accept the Supreme Court's ruling regardless of which way they decide? Uh, I don't think we'll have any choice but to accept the court's ruling. But here, I think the court's ruling is going to be he has no immunity. The problem is, can we accept and live with the delay? And I don't think we have much choice here. Uh, once again, Donald Trump trying to run out the clock. We have to hope and pray that voters reject him uh, when they have a chance to vote this November, so that if the Justice Department and justice has not been served, that it will be served after the election. Which gets us right back to Rachel Maddow's point. She's terrified he'll never leave office because you get the shift show hanging out in the background waiting, saying, okay, now we got our chance. Now we got our chance. We got, let's run it again, Drew. Why not? This woman is just something else. Rachel Maddow freaking out because maybe he'll just never leave office. If you think about the, the court as the Supreme Court of the United States and a rational actor and a decent one, that was a reasonable supposition. And it just turns out they're not that. Um, feel, you know, incremental bit of progress here. The important question here is not whether the Supreme Court is going to decide that Donald Trump and all presidents are immune from prosecution for things they commit, crimes they committed while they were president. I mean, it would be fully insane for them to actually side with Trump here, right? The conclusion that we can arrive at now based on what they have done without having to wait for the ruling is that they are ensuring that Trump will not face trial. And when they inevitably rule that presidents aren't immune from prosecution after they leave office, what that will tell Donald Trump, if by then he is president, is that he can never leave the office of the presidency. Right. And if he is voted out in 2028, he cannot leave office and he is willing to com he, is, he is welcome to commit any crimes he wants to as long as he is still president in order to ignore the result of that election and stay in power for life because otherwise he is going to go to prison when he gets out Dios mio. <laughs> okay my god so this is the narrative that she's coming up with now it's always a new narrative it's it's an interesting narrative. It's always a very interesting narrative. You gotta hand her that. She's a good entertainer in, in that sense. But it's a narrative and it's a yarn, as you might say. We had to live with that yarn for years until the Mueller report came out and told us that all that junk that they were trying to feed the media, by the way, it was being fed by ex-CIA people like John Brennan that somehow there was this tape that the Russians had, and so there was this dossier. It was all a bunch of hocus pocus. And yet she ran with that night after night after night after night. No one called her out for it. Not like they called out Tucker Carlson, Chuck Schumer on the floor of Capitol Hill, calling him out because he dared to say, you know, maybe there's a little more to the J6 story that we ought to investigate. I don't know. It's, it's their way or the highway. And it's growing quite frightening. I have a new example of this that I want to share with you. The left is so determined to have their point of view put across. The White House is so determined to make sure that we don't talk about Hunter Biden. I'm thinking about that Disney song. 
We don't talk about Bruno, right? You don't talk about Hunter Biden. You're not allowed to talk about Hunter Biden because Fox, which has been talking about Hunter, they just got a really nasty letter, a really nasty letter from the White House. I'm going to show you that. But first, KJP, the press person for Joe Biden, he could do better. But anyway, she was asked again about Hunter Biden on CNN, actually. The White House is like, oh my gosh, can't we make the story go away? Can't we make it go? You can't make it go away because he just testified there yesterday. Anyway, KJP getting asked about it. And you can see she, she, she didn't want any part of it. She doesn't want any link between Joe and Hunter. Watch. Has the president spoken to his son Hunter since Hunter Biden's testimony uh, before the House committee yesterday? So I, I get asked this question all the time, John, as you can imagine, at the podium, and I've always been very consistent. I'm just not going to comment on the president's private family conversation, so just don't have a comment for you on that. Well, the White House no. publicly sent a letter to Fox News criticizing them for their coverage over the last few weeks of Alexei Smirnov, who was this FBI, FBI informant who's now been arrested for allegedly lying about Hunter Biden and President Biden. Why did the White House decide to send that letter? So look, uh, the letters from my colleague speaks for itself, and you're right, that letter was sent. What I will say this more broadly is that we understand how difficult it is for all of you. you we understand how difficult it is for, uh, and you know this, John, how, how difficult it is to, to re the reporting, and we understand how important it is to report on the facts and to be accurate. And that's what we're asking for. We're asking to make sure that when reporting about issues mm -hmm. that are critical, that American people are hearing about, it, need to be, it needs to be factual and it needs to be accurate. And again, the letter speaks for itself that my colleagues sent out. In other words, don't report on it. Don't report on it or else. By the way, that letter praises CNN. I have the letter. Let's look at it right now. Uh, but, but before we do, let me just preface by saying, you know, Alexei Smirnov, he was the informant for the FBI that had been on the FBI's payroll for many, many years, going back to the Obama days. He was considered stellar. And apparently he had intelligence that he reported to the FBI that now the White House says is totally fake, was all just one big lie, but his intelligence was that Joe Biden had had a conversation with the executive at Burisma in which there was talk of some kind of quid pro quo. These are all allegations. He made these allegations to some people at the FBI. For some reason, this was never pursued, even though they thought the guy was like a stand-up FBI informant. And they didn't fire him, they didn't take him off the payroll, nothing. There was nothing going on until suddenly James Comer and Jim Jordan found out about this informant. There's some special 1023 form that they found out about. So then they started asking some questions. And the next thing you know, Alexei Smirnov is in jail. I mean, wow, you really can't report on this. I'm, I'm taking my chances here, guys. You better subscribe. You better subscribe and hit that darn bell so you know when I'm here. Anyway, here's the letter that they sent to Fox News. I'm going to show you. It's, it's, it's a long one, so bear with me. It starts, and Mediaite had a copy of it. I write to you about Fox News Channel and Fox News digital coverage of the false, discredited, bribery allegation involving President Joe Biden, which Fox outlets have given significant coverage to over the past year. In May 2023, Fox began promoting stories of this allegation, pointing to sources who said a, quote, foreign witness had brought this allegation through intermediaries to the Trump Justice Department. Over the following weeks, the network and digital properties continued to promote this story aggressively. On May 10th, 2023, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, he's great, by the way, he's been on this show, he's a good friend of mine, he wrote that this allegation could prove President Biden committed crimes. Ooh, Greg, you're in trouble. It goes on. A June 2nd, 2023 story cited anonymous sources to report the allegation came from highly credible source, a highly credible source. Well, it was everyone's understanding up until suddenly now that Alexei Smirnov actually was a highly credible source. We had no reason to think otherwise. Anyway, it goes on. June 8th, 2023, a story cited anonymous sources 
calling this a pay to play scheme. And that story led with allegations that President Biden coerced a foreign national into a bribe. I would cite the number of times Jesse Waters and Sean Hannity promoted this allegation and made false statements about President Biden on primetime television throughout this time period, but the footnote citations would fill multiple pages. Oof, they have to give a little dig as well. I guess I should, as long as I'm reporting this, remind you all these are allegations, 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 allegations. You got it? Because maybe Jesse or Sean forgot to say that. I doubt it, but maybe they did. And thus, they're going after him for that. One longtime Fox News host rightly scoffed at the ridiculousness of the discredited allegations. And apparently, that host was fired, says this letter, as we continue moving on. Yeah. Okay. So that, I don't know who that was. Do you, any guesses? Could that, was that Geraldo? I don't know. I, I don't think Geraldo was really let go for that. I think there was some tension there on the set between Greg and Geraldo. My two cents. I don't know anything, <laughs> but I think that actually Geraldo came out and talked about that. The next month he was fired from his hosting job and left the network. At the time, President Biden accurately dismissed this false allegation as malarkey. And instead of reporting on the facts of why the alley scorched by right wing commentators across Twitter. Well, he was, I mean, you know, right wing commentators, I think kind of picked up on this story and they, they did kind of laugh at him about the whole malarkey thing. And then I do remember him saying something about, yeah, well, where's the money? And everybody had some fun with that too. It goes on and on and on and on. Let's see. As you know, the source of this allegation has been federally indicted. That's their whole thing, right? He's federally indicted. He has been said to have made the whole thing up. Oh gosh, would that be like Christopher Steele? Hey, Drew, I'm giving you a heads up. Maybe if you can find it, let's get that quote from Jim Jordan on Maria Bartiromo's show the other day, on Sunday, remember when Jim was like talking about the difference between Christopher Steele and Alexei Smirnov? Anyway, I'll, I'll continue reading here. As you likely also know, a recent public court filing in this case alleged that this source stated that he had been in contact with Russian intelligence operatives. Well, I guess that would be to be expected, right? I mean, it's the spy world, and so they're all talking to each other. I mean, that's kind of how they get their information. The Washington Post reported Smirnov's indictment and detention memo suggest the allegations were not only false, but possibly a Russian-inspired smear. Of course, there we go back to it was the Russians trying to put misinformation into our marketplace. Hey, look, maybe this one was, but you know, it's like the little boy who cried wolf because they keep saying that and they keep saying that and now they're saying it again. Russia, Russia, Russia. Despite this, Fox has taken no steps to retract, to correct, or to update its reporting on this false allegation from 2023. Is there more to this letter, Drew? I think there is, yeah. <laughs> so then they're like praising the New York Times. They go on to praise CNN too. The New York Times recently reported that instead of acknowledging the latest development's responsibility, Fox News personalities have chosen to respond by pushing new false conspiracy theories. We feel strongly that all Fox News digital articles on this topic should at a minimum be updated with editor's notes informing readers that the source of this allegation has been federally indicted for making it up. We also feel strongly that the Fox News television personalities like Hannity and Jesse, among others, should inform their viewers on air that they have been sharing a discredited allegation from a source who has been federally indicted for making it up. Woo! <laughs> There's more! All right, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but just give you one more. I told you they were going to give CNN a plug. CNN is so dutiful. You know, CNN does the right thing all the time. CNN, I'm surprised they didn't go for MSNBC too, reported recently, Fox News' stable of hosts have declined to properly correct the record, and the outlet's supposedly nonpartisan news website has also failed to update its exclusive reporting from last summer, publicly surfacing the informant's false claims. Articles by reporter Brooke Singman. By the way, I know her very well. I've known her for years. She's an excellent reporter. Advancing Smirnov's bribery allegations remain unaltered on the foxnews.com website without a correction or mention that the one-time FBI informant has been charged with lying to the federal law enforcement about the very claims that she, meaning Brooke, reported. My gosh. My gosh. Okay, so... They say he lied. They've indicted him. At first, they thought, okay, he can stay at home and wait for trial. But no, no, they decided to change their mind. They're not going to let him out. He's under lock and key. They just threw him in the slammer, this Alexei Smirnoff. 
I mean, hey, careful what you say. Careful what you report. Careful, Fox News. Careful, Trish Regan. Right? I've already been down that path. <laughs> the advantage is I'm not there anymore. <laughs> That's the good news. Remember to subscribe. Remember to subscribe. So James Comer and Jim Jordan went on Maria Bartiromo's show just the other day. And I, I showed you a couple clips from this before, but what was interesting to me is Maria was making the point, rightly so, that, hey, you know what? Christopher Steele didn't get squat. He didn't even get a slap on the wrist. And it turns out all his stuff was fake. I mean, Christopher Steele even employed a guy that our FBI was watching at the time, not like a stellar employee, apparently like this Alexei Smirnov guy was, but rather somebody who was under watch from our FBI because they thought he might be a Russian spy. So Christopher Steele, ex-British spy covering Russia, he employs this guy in the U.S. that the FBI is already suspect about. They put together a grand old scheme, quite the paper, quite entertaining. I mean, it was gross. It was actually really, 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 really gross. I read it and was like, are you kidding me? This doesn't even read like intelligence research. This is a joke. Anyway, they put that out. There were no repercussions. But Alexei Smirnov, who reported something to the FBI and then somehow it made its way to James Comer and Jim Jordan. Like, he's in the slammer right now. Like, he's not allowed out on bail, period. I mean, this is kind of crazy. And Maria makes this point with Jim. Watch. There has been no accountability whatsoever. Yeah. You all have been unable to pin anybody down about yeah. what we know to be true now, that the Russia collusion story was a lie and that Steele dossier was made up. How come yeah. Christopher Steele was never indicted? Yeah, no kidding. He, and he continued to get paid after they found out what he told uh, the FBI wasn't true. And of course, now we have this Smirnoff guy and, the, and he gets in, uh, died, indicted and arrested not once, but twice. Here's the interesting thing about Smirnoff. David Weiss, the guy who's been investigating Hunter Biden for now almost five years, David Weiss had this information, the 1023 back in 2020. What did he do for the last three years? What did he do for the last three and a half years? Why didn't he look into it before? Because all we knew is what Chairman Comer just said. Christopher Ray said this was a great source, confidential human source that we've been paying for 14 years. He's helped put away bad guys. The safety of him is jeopardized if we give you access to this 1023. And now, now they are, maybe the guy did lie. I don't know. But it seems strange to me because it looks like David Weiss didn't do a darn thing with this until after the plea deal falls apart last July. Weird, right? <laughs> and, and now you're not allowed to report on it. And this is no-go territory. I mean, this Ian Sams, who's the, the White House guy in charge of policing some of this content, he already made that clear on CNN. Watch. Well, again, I think this is part of the right wing's misinformation machine to try to confuse people uh, about what the truth is. The truth is that the president, as he has said publicly for years, uh, calls his family every day to check in. He calls his son every day to check in. He calls his other family members to check in to see how they're doing. He loves them. There's, they're a tight-knit family. And what the GOP's own witness testified in this case is that that's exactly what the president was doing. He was checking in with Hunter during a particularly hard time, I might add, a time where the family was going through uh, Hunter's brother Bo's illness. Uh, and of course, the president checks in with his son and talks to him. But again, so he's referring to the phone calls that were being made by the president to his son, Hunter, while Hunter was allegedly out to dinner with some of these bigwigs. It was like, oh, hey, here's my dad. So he could maybe allegedly show off his access and then allegedly like got a Porsche the next day from one of these fancy schmancy dinners. I mean, look, there's a lot of questions. But you're not supposed to ask them right now. Fox News, you're in trouble for asking them. You're in trouble for reporting on any of this. And, and they're going to make sure of it. So it's a, little, it's a little strange because it does seem like there are reasons to ask these questions. And I go back to this over and over and over again. Do not forget that Hunter Biden was employed by this company, Burisma. Burisma was a natural gas company, now basically defunct out of Ukraine. Really, really sketchy company. There was a guy named Victor Shokin, who was the investigator who was looking into any kind of illegal opportunities and things that were going on at Burisma. Burisma had Hunter Biden on their board. 
They were paying him $83,000 a month. Unheard of. There is no such thing as a board job for $83,000 a month. You're lucky to get $83,000 a year for a board job. So he's getting $83K a month to sit on the board of Burisma Energy, a natural gas company he knows nothing about the natural gas industry. And it's all while his dad is the vice president of the United States of America, by the way, in charge of Ukraine policy. Yeah. And in charge of the money that we were giving Ukraine. And we now know from a New York Times article just over the weekend that we were giving them a fair amount because we've had a CIA op going on for the last 10 years in Ukraine. So Joe Biden kind of like gloating about the power he had over Ukraine, stupidly admitted something that kind of matters because basically he got the prosecutor, this Victor Shokin, who was investigating his son's employer, Burisma, fired. And then Joe goes on to some fancy schmancy little gathering at the CFR. CFR is okay, by the way. I was a member for many years, Council on Foreign Relations. But he sits up there on stage with Richard Haas and brags about how he got choked and fired. Watch. I, I, I was, not I, I, but it just happened to be that was the assignment I got. I, I, I got all the good ones. Uh, uh, and uh, so I got Ukraine. And uh, um, I remember going over convincing our team, our <coughs> others, to convincing us that we should be providing for loan guarantees. And I went over... I guess the 12th, 13th time to Kiev, and, uh, and I was going, supposed to announce that there was another billion dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they, had, they were walking out to the press conference and said, No, nah, I said, I'm not going to, or we're not going to give you the billion dollars. They said, You have no authority. You're not the president. The president said, I said, Call him. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> We're keeping it clean. <laughs> that was my way of bleeping out his bad language. Anyway, you get the point, right? So this needs to be gotten to the bottom of. I'm sorry, you know, the White House can complain all they want. But last I checked, you know what, we got a First Amendment here in the United States of America, thank you very much, which is why it's so freeing, right, to be, to be here, to be with all of you. We're in a live show right now, so I am looking at your comments as they come in in real time. Thank you so much. I see so many regulars again, and it's great to have you. We have so many people tuning in, and it's like it's gaining so much momentum. Um, if you're just joining us for the first time, subscribe like, share, do all those things. Oh, and hit the bell. So there's this little bell thing on YouTube. You need to hit it because then you know when I'm actually here live and, and you can join the conversation with us. But it, it's important to remember we do have a First Amendment. And the advantage is, no, I don't work for Fox anymore. Fox, which, by the way, have you seen their stock price? The Fox News stock price. I'm talking Class B shares because the family holds the A shares. I mean, they have just tanked some 31%. In the last three years, they were at their high, like around March 2021, and they've just been like, woo, way down. And there was a big article in Mediaite today saying that the cable news days of paying lots of money, totally over. I've been telling you that, have I not, for the last couple of years. I mean, it's totally over. You look at Disney, you look at Fox. Anybody who has any capability is going to be out on their own. Anybody who can actually think for themselves and wants to think for themselves as a personality, as a commentator, they're out on their own because who the heck wants to deal with micromanagement saying you can say this, but you can't say that. Oh, and the White House told us you can't say that. <laughs> That's not a good place to be as a journalist, as a reporter, or as an opinion maker. Now, is it? Look, I've been there, done that. You look at all the people that have left, and the answer is it's better on the other side. And frankly, this is the future. Streaming is the future. Independent media is the future. You know I have my biases, right? I think we share a lot of the same biases. But I actually try very hard to make sure I do show you the other point of view because 
you can't really understand your own point of view without understanding where the other side is coming from. Plus, it's worth understanding how crazy the other side is, frankly. But this is an opportunity for us to actually have a very free form kind of discussion. I got no, com I mean, you guys, you guys may get some commercials, but like when you see me gulping my water, it's because there are no commercial breaks. We don't have that two and a half or three minute long interlude for me here. I am live right now in real time and reading your comments in real time and seeing your response in real time. And actually, it's really tremendous. And I think that this medium is only going to change and get better and better and better as we move forward. And so that's the truth of it. As a result, you know, you look at these cable companies, which are dependent on fees, carriage fees. Is AT&T going to continue, DirecTV going to continue paying these gigantic carriage fees in the future when, in fact, you can go and get your media this way? I actually have, have cut the cord myself because it turns out you can get everything you need digitally, streaming. You don't actually have to have a cable company anymore. So it's changing right before our very eyes. And I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, we pick on, <laughs> we're picking on Fox and I don't mean to, I mean, I still have a lot of friends there and there's a lot of really good people there and good reporters. But what I would say is that the system, so to speak, of networks, it just doesn't work anymore. And I think that's because people are looking for this authenticity. They're looking for this truth and they're looking for personalities that aren't afraid to say exactly what they think. And that is what you will get here, for better or for worse. I mean, sometimes it gets me in a whole lot of trouble, <laughs> as we've seen, right? We have only to go back to March 2020, ladies and gentlemen. But again, just a reminder to like, subscribe, to know that you know, the challenges that we're seeing there in the media world today are in part, well, I, not even in part, I mean, primarily because of this new medium. Content is still critical. Content is key. But you can get your content in very different ways and very authentic ways, unlike the past. So that's what I find especially exciting. The White House, not so much, because you can't control it anymore. Think about that. You can't control this narrative. There's a lot at stake coming up in 24. I mean, I worry about it from the perspective of, yes, my First Amendment is so vital and important to me and to you and to all of us, and we need to be able to have open discussions and we've seen over the last four years, the last three years, but I'd actually say four because Deep State had a hand in this one as well. They've tried to shut that down. And so if it weren't for platforms like this where we can continue to, to share information, we wouldn't have the opportunity to talk about everything. And that's a big deal. It's one of the reasons why I actually want to encourage you right now to go find my friends at Job Creators Network. Join JCN.com. It's a wonderful organization, terrific people. Alfredo's actually going to be on the show next week. Um, he's a great guy. He runs it. And he's so passionate about making sure that we're doing the right things to preserve our integrity as a country, including our integrity as an economy, so that we have this chance for everybody to grow and partake in the great American dream. Join JCN.com. That is their website. And what's really neat about them is that they have people all over the country like all over the country. It's not like it's just DC stuff, right? They are all over the country and they're really out there protecting and fighting for small business owners so that we can all sort of engage in, and enjoy America's riches. Reality is small business is the backbone of America's economy. If small business is not doing well, trust me, big business is not doing well. So we need that less bureaucratic, less rule-oriented, less red tape when it comes to small businesses. And this is part of their mandate. This is what they're really pushing for. So go over and check them out. I encourage you to join them. Join jcn.com. They're looking out for your interests. They're looking out for mine. And part of our interests, right, are things like freedom of speech, less onerous taxation, and also keeping some semblance of a border, thank you very much. Look at what's going on today. You got President Trump showing up there down in Texas. He just got off the plane. Let's cut to the tape. Nice weather, beautiful day, but a very dangerous border. We're going to take care of it. Thank you. Mr. President, do you have any legislation ideas? You know, earlier in the day, he made a, a more elaborate commentary. He's going to be, I believe, doing an interview with Hannity 
this evening. So that will be interesting to see. But let's just take a little preview, a peek of some of the things that are most important to him right now. He is highlighting that tragedy that happened in Georgia. Just awful, awful, awful stuff. And he, he spoke on True Social. By the way, True Social, that might be his saving grace to getting some money to cover Letitia and company in New York. It, he's got a, quite a big stake, 78% of the company. But let's watch him here on True Social speaking just uh, moments ago. Migrant crime is taking over America. From his very first day, Joe Biden allowed an invasion of our country, resettling dangerous illegal aliens from all over the world into American communities to prey on our people. The latest victim of Joe Biden's premeditated border invasion is Lakin Riley. Last week, Lakin went out for her morning jog and never came back home. A Biden migrant has been charged with brutally attacking her beating her, kidnapping her, and murdering her on the campus of the University of Georgia. This monster should never have been allowed in our country. He was released at Crooked Joe's orders and set loose into our country. The radical left Democrats then released him onto the public yet a second time after he was arrested in New York for injuring a child. How many more innocent victims must be harmed and how much more innocent blood must be spilled until we stop this invasion, this horrible, horrible invasion, and remove these illegal alien criminals from our country? As President, I will carry out the largest domestic deportation operation in American history to remove Joe Biden's illegals and murderers, because that's what many of them are. They're from mental institutions, and they're from prisons from all over the world, from Africa, from Asia, from South America, from the Middle East, all over the world. Many of them come from prisons and mental institutions. It's very simple. If they don't go back to their countries, we will never get back our country. Thank you very much. We're so sorry to be talking about this to the parents. They're great people. Lake and Riley will be very, very sorely missed. This should never, ever happen again. Our country is being overrun by criminals by murderers, by drug addicts. They're all coming in through Joe Biden's horrible open border. There's never been a border like this anywhere in the world at any time. He is a disaster as a president. He doesn't understand it. He doesn't understand how bad it is. It's so bad, the whole world is talking about it. There's never been a case like this. Thank you. Wow. And he is in Eagle Pass, Texas. We're going to be bringing you some of these clips in just a moment. But before we do, I just want to point out that there was a brand new, a brand new survey that came out of Gallup today, a new poll showing that 28% of Americans view the border as the most important issue right now. It's more important than the economy. It's more important than what's going overseas. 28%, and this is up significantly from where it was even just a few weeks ago. So it's very clear, like this matters to people. Let's also be very clear that it's mattered to Donald Trump like forever, right? I can still see him coming down the escalator there at Trump Tower and everybody was just gaping. They were like, oh, their mouths were like on the floor. We couldn't believe what he was saying, right? Back when he was spotting this as an issue, even then, and it's grown worse in part because if you ask me, my opinion, Joe Biden made it very clear that he was all for people coming to this country. He was all for this kind of open border. Yeah, you know, you could come and apply for asylum and then you get, you know, released and then who knows? I mean, that, that's an unfortunate situation of what we've seen with some of these recent tragedies. But I want to point out that, that Donald Trump is, and Drew, we have, this, uh, we have this sound that just came in, so he's just going to cue this up for you guys so that we can watch Donald Trump there in Eagle Pass, Texas, talking about the border. And uh, there's a few clips I want to show you. Let's see, Drew, do we have them? I, I think he's pulling it up right now. I mean, this is, I'll tell you, this is what could actually really and truly win it for this president. Because with 28% of the country caring so desperately about this so much right now, I'll tell you, I don't, I don't know how Biden stands a chance. Anybody's going to look at his record and say, look, under you, buddy, we got really messed up. And it got worse and worse and worse to the point where you're now looking at record levels, record levels of people coming into this country illegally, and nobody seems to care. You think about what happened there in, in New York City. And they, they, you know, they, with, with police officers being beaten up, I mean, even now, 
the mayor of New York City, and they're not too happy with him, shall we say, in the Democrat Party. The mayor of New York City is like, we can't, we can't be this. We cannot be a sanctuary city because it just simply isn't working. It's fundamentally bad for the citizens who are actually here. And not to mention, we don't have the resources. We don't have the resources, guys, to do this. Let's see, Drew, have we got it ready? Uh, let me know, because I think this would be a good one to play for people right now. Donald Trump there in Eagle Pass, Texas. As I said, he just landed moments ago. Let's take a peek. Okay. He's working on it. We're going to get you this because this is important to see. The other thing that's important to keep in mind is that this is kind of a dueling moment, if you would, for both, for both Biden and for Trump, because Biden is also at the border, conveniently enough. Think about that, guys. So you get Trump going down, you get Biden going down. Who do you think is going to do a little bit better? in that you know he, he biden's taking it as an opportunity to shoot out at trump saying quote i love some of my neanderthal friends who still think there's no climate change then he also said here's what i would say to mr trump join me or i'll jump join you i don't know what that's about but let me bring that one to you as well right now again these bits of sound just coming in conveniently enough right around five o'clock right so they can get it turned i guess for the evening news if anybody watches the evening news anymore <laughs> to you. I used to work on the evening news, both at CBS and at NBC. And um, you want to talk about a scripted, tight, controlled environment. That indeed, ladies and gentlemen, was one because you'd get a minute 30 for a script and God help you. God help you. If you went over, they'd say you get a nine second tag. That's it. And you know, I like to talk. So what was I supposed to do with nine seconds? This is very stressful. You gotta, you gotta like pack all your words into nine seconds. But Biden making fun of Donald Trump saying, okay, now we gotta join each other on this one. I don't know as Trump is too willing to join him. And that's in part because guess what? Guess what? This is under Biden's watch. In other words, we are now looking at record numbers of people coming in under Biden's watch. And that's pretty disturbing. And somehow he goes down there and starts talking about climate change. That's Joe Biden. I mean, is that perhaps another example of his uh, lack of proficiency in terms of his mental capabilities? I don't know. I'm pulling these sound bites for us as we speak. And Drew's queuing them up for you. We are working hard, ladies and gentlemen, on this Thursday afternoon to bring you all of this. I'm sending him clip two from Joe the, Biden, uh, but let's see if we have Donald Trump. He's going to give me a thumbs up. He's got it ready. Wahoo! All right. Spoke Drew. to the parents of an incredible awesome. young lady. And let's you, watch. You saw her the other day. You saw what happened the other day in Georgia. And the parents are devastated. They're incredible people. But this is a Joe Biden invasion. This is a Biden invasion over the past three years. I call him Crooked Joe because he's crooked. He's a terrible president, the worst president our country's ever had. Uh, probably the most incompetent president we've ever had. But it's uh, allowing thousands and thousands of people to come in from China, Iran, Yemen, the Congo, Syria, and a lot of other nations. Many nations are not very friendly to us. He's transported the entire columns of uh, fighting-aged men, and they're all at a certain age. And you look at them, and they say, they're they look like warriors to me. Something's going on that's bad. Now the United States is being overrun by the Biden migrant crime. It's a new form of uh, vicious violation to our country. It's migrant crime. We call it Biden migrant crime, but that's a little bit long. So we'll just leave it. But every time you hear the term migrant crime, you know where that comes from, allowing thousands and thousands and actually millions and millions of people to come could be 15 million could be 18 million by the time he uh, gets out of office because hopefully the biggest risk we have is nine months that's a long time a lot of bad why is it all happening now i keep going back to the kind of rhetoric that was coming from the Democrat Party. They wanted to contrast themselves with Donald Trump. Their only way of doing that was to seem like, oh, Trump is the bad guy. Trump is the mean guy. Trump is the one that wants to be un-American. You know, we are America, the Statue of Liberty, all this jazz. But you know what? I'll tell you, back then, people came in legally. 
you know, you came through Ellis Island and all that jazz, right? Like you came in legally and if there was something wrong with you, they put you over to the side. Heck, they even changed people's names because they're like, that's too foreign sounding a name. And then you also think about that generation of immigrants and they so desperately wanted to blend into America. They so desperately wanted to earn their own way and earn their own keep. And consequently, they created something that is truly magnificent. Right, this nation is a nation of immigrants. I'm a proud Irish immigrant myself. I got a little Lithuanian in there, a little Scottish too, but you know, primarily identifying a, as an Irish lass. Trish Regan tells you all you need to know. And I think about the challenges that my own family has overcome and the poverty that my parents grew up in and the belief that this country would afford more opportunity. And it did. So how do you keep that going? One, you got to instill a little patriotism and a little respect for this great nation that we live in. You can't think you're going to live off the dole. I mean, Rome fell for a reason, right? You, you actually have to encourage people to, to, to let them know that, you know what, you're here in America. You can do anything here. It's limitless. If you believe in yourself and you work hard. But for some reason, the left wants to keep perpetuating this. No, no, no. You can't get ahead because of the color of your skin or your sex or your sexual preference or whatever it may be, because they're so wedded to this idea of identity politics and division, 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 male versus female, black versus white, that they're losing sight of what we all have in common, what we all really are. And that is American. Right? As Americans, we believe in this country, but we also believe in law and order. We believe in coming to this country and taking care of oneself. We believe in making sure that we have a very secure border. Because trust me, you're not getting into Mexico and voting in elections there. Can you imagine that? They actually wanted illegal migrants to be voting in school board elections that just got shut down in New York City. Oh, they can vote out in Berkeley, California. That is bizarre. And it sets a very dangerous precedent. And this is why so much is at stake. And Joe Biden is wise to wake up to the fact that Americans don't like this. 28% of Americans polled by Gallup say, uh-uh, don't like this. Immigration is the biggest issue in this country. So what does Joey do? He goes down to Texas. Apparently Kamala wasn't quite cutting it. Let's watch. Let me end with this. I understand my predecessor's legal past today. So here's what I would say to Mr. Trump. Instead of playing politics with this issue, instead of telling members of Congress to block this legislation, join me, or I'll join you in telling the Congress to pass this bipartisan border security bill. We can do it together. You know and I know. It's the toughest, most efficient, most effective border security bill this country has ever seen. So instead of playing politics with the issue, why don't we just get together and get it done? Let's remember who the heck mm. we work for. We work for the American people, not the Democratic Party, the Republican Party. We work for the American people. And let's remember who we are. We're the United States of America. No, I mean this. Think about this. There's nothing, nothing beyond our capacity. Nothing when we work together. And if all things we should be working together on is this, and we have the formula to get it done. God bless you all. And may God bless you. It's a serious question. I mean, I don't get the impression he really wants to get it done. He is asking for more money so that they can process more people coming into this country. But then they go into the country, what, never to be heard from again? Because the, the court dates are years out. They got a whole big thing they get to fix. And you know what? I'm going to tell you this right here, right now. They cannot tie it to Ukraine. Okay? I know they want their $60 billion for Ukraine. They cannot tie the border to Ukraine. They got to actually deal with the border head on. And Trump tried to. I mean, heck, Joe Biden came in and tore down the wall that Trump built. And by the way, spent more money tearing down the wall. And now he's right back where he started. So I don't buy that there's any commitment 
from the Democrats to this border issue. I mean, the reverse. They seem to want to open it up and bring more and more people here and then say, hey, you can vote in school board elections and pretty soon who knows what else. I mean, it's a pretty pessimistic way of thinking about it, but I'm increasingly becoming a realist in this environment. I guess you have to be. Indeed, you have to be. Look, they did get some budget thing put together today. They, they passed another resolution, so we get an extension to March 8th. <laughs> it's like another Band-Aid. Band-Aid, 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 Band-Aid. A lot of people were hoping the Republicans would kind of stand up to this and say, okay, you know, enough is enough. But no, they, they've got a little Band-Aid that they put through. So now we've got this extension until March 8th. It's going to the Senate. I'll just tell you this, guys. You know what? We can't continue $43 trillion in debt. Like, that is not sustainable. We are darn lucky we're the hegemonic power of the world. China would love to have that spot. So would, so would Russia. So would anybody, right? We are the hegemonic power of the world, which means we still have relatively low interest rates. People still actually want to be in the U.S. economy, invested in the U.S. economy. And historically, that's been not only because we're the hegemonic power, but because we have a decent legal system, which has clearly been put to the test, thanks to Letitia James. The judge in New York City, the $355 million verdict, Donald Trump offering up a $100 million bond for which he has to pay 9% interest on, or $9 million just to give them their $100 million to tie them over to the appellate court. Here's his case, but the appellate court said, no, we're not taking that. We want the full shebang. So it's somewhere around, we keep hearing different numbers, but let's just suffice it to say more than half a billion dollars. They want him to put up more than half a billion dollars as he waits for his trial. This is a case of the crime not finishing, fit, fitting the punishment in any way, shape, or form. Let's assume he's guilty. Let's say, okay, you should not have said that the square footage was X when it was really Y. You shouldn't have said that Mar-a-Lago, that's actually subjective though, you know, what you actually think your property's worth versus what Letitia James thinks it's worth. I'm sorry. That is subjective. But let's just go with square footage for a moment. So, okay, he's guilty. He said his square footage was X when it was really Y. You got him. I mean, the bank did the deal. The bank got paid back. There was no victim, but you got him on that. So what's the penalty on that? You want to tell me the penalty is half a billion dollars? And you want to continue to be the place in the world where people still invest capital? Are you kidding me? No. I'm sorry, that doesn't work, that doesn't fly, because why would I invest in a system that has no rhyme or reason from a legal perspective, where I could lose my shirt because I'm on the wrong side of some political aisle? That's what they are really putting to the test. Like, I think it'll get all reversed in the appellate court, but it still costs him a heck of a lot of money in the interim. I mean, does he have any recourse for that? He can't go back and sue Letitia James or sue the judge or sue New York City. I wish he could, because he should. The market closed way up today. NASDAQ hitting another high. So again, people still want to be in the U.S., and I just look at it and say, for how long? He thinks it's because they think he's going to be president. Maybe. I mean, it's part of it. It's also AI, which also helps because we've got a lot of changes that are happening from a technological perspective. So all of this contributes to hopefully very, very good things ahead. Hey, um, quick note. So many of you are just weighing in. I want to say thank you for your nice compliments. And I, I, I'm glad you like my dress. Um, <laughs> I feel pretty good these days. I've been feeling pretty good these days. I'm feeling good because you are all here and we're upwards of 210,000 here on the YouTube channel now. Subscribers, make sure you subscribe and you hit the bell. But I'm also feeling good because guess what? I started taking some new capsules, fruits and veggie capsules, because it's really important I get my fruits and veggies. I'm not always the best about it. I like protein. Give me a steak any day of the week. I do kind of like broccoli, but you know, the fruits, I've never been that, that into. But now I'm taking these things religiously. Balance of nature, I've been taking for the last couple of months. I think it's one of the reasons I look as good as I do. <laughs> I'm teasing you. I can say that at my age, right? Anyway, balance of nature, go check them out. Balanceofnature.com. If we can put it up on the screen, there you go. It's, it's, it's good stuff, I think. I mean, I really like it. 1-800-246-8751. And what I really like is that you'll get a discount code if you use my name. They're one of our new sponsors on the show, so I'm proud of that too. Use discount code Trish, T-R-I-S-H, 1-800-246-8751, balanceofnature.com. You can go to their website, check it out. They've got a terrific history. They've, they've been 
in business for many, many years, some 20 years. They've got a phenomenal story, a phenomenal start. You can read all about it on the website and you can get the fruits and veggies capsules there on the website as well. You can call them if you want to go the traditional route, but I encourage you to take a look. Again, it's Balance of Nature, balanceofnature.com. Use the discount code because you get 35% off and, and tell me what you think, by the way. I appreciate the feedback, right? This is, this is a two-way conversation. I'm hoping one day it's going to be three-way as we continue to see all these differences in AI and in technology and all of these great things that are coming our way because this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is the future. I mean, to think that I can stream here live with you, I gotta just say, I was explaining this to the kids the other day, like back in the day when I'd cover hurricanes. Yeah, I, I did that too. <laughs> back in my news reporter days, early on, I'd get sent out to a hurricane. There was one year I covered Rita, I covered Wilma, and I covered Katrina. It was a bad year, that might've been 06. And you had to always think about where your satellite truck was. And you had to position the satellite truck, it was super, for, it was super expensive, right, to get the satellite truck in the first place. And so you'd have to also make sure it was well positioned on high ground. It's good training because anytime there's a hurricane coming my way, I know exactly what to do. And uh, you'd get the, the, the live truck and you'd make sure that you had shelter, this, that, and the other. But the most important thing was getting your feet up. And to think that we can now get these feeds where we're, we're transmitting video to you in real time, it's absolutely incredible. And the changes are happening. I talk about this with Drew, um, who's producing this show. I mean, it's just amazing what we're able to do in real time. And, and, and it's, it's pretty just, it blows me away. And it's, it's changing so fast and so quickly. And so this is a big part of the future. And I love it. And I love it. And that's the way I say, you know, we're here in two-way communication. But that's going to change soon. Because I have a feeling, Leslie, if you want to be on camera with me, <laughs> we're going to be able to put you on camera. Robert, good to see you. Hirsch for real, good to see you as well. Uh, <laughs> Laura as well. Um, it, look, it is a... Uh, it's really, it's really neat to see you all here. Um, so many regulars and so many David. David, I agree with you. Do not invest in New York City right now. It's kind of a scary place, right? Because you're on the wrong side of that political equation and uh, you could come out on, on certainly the very bad end. So David David is one of our team members and we're growing our team members here on the YouTube channel. I'm also live on Facebook and I am live on Rumble as well. So great, great platforms all around. I do think that this is truly, as I said, the future. Don Baca, who has just been such a champion. I, I adore Don for all his hard work that he puts into this channel and reminding you all to hit the likes and to subscribe and to share and all of those good things um, because it matters. You know, I just liked it too. So we're up to 524 likes right now. Um, Dennis, good to have you here. And to, to Randy and everybody, look, uh, I'm just looking through, Solera is making the point that trillion is the new billion. And I agree with you. I mean, $34 trillion in debt, who would have ever thought that? And you know, this stuff compounds, guys. It compounds. We, we better hope interest rates stay low because the more the interest rates are moving higher, the more trouble indeed that we have. Um, one thing I wanted to mention as far as inflation goes, some of my friends over at the Committee to Unleash Prosperity came out with a really terrific report yesterday that analyzed just exactly where we are on inflation. Drew had asked me the other day, like, what does it mean? They say the inflation's going down. But you see, it's not really going down because it's still upwards from where it was before. So Biden comes into office, inflation goes up, what, 9.8%. We were nearly at double digits. We were nearly at 10%. I think it was actually in the 11% range for producer prices. But what was incredible is that every, you know, so they're way up, like nearly 10%. And we're still seeing this constant rise in inflation. And then it comes down, so it's only up, what, 6% the next month. These numbers are not exact, by the way. But it started coming down, meaning it was up, say 5% the next month. Well, you still realize that you were up nearly 10%, and so then you're up again 6%. It's not like it's actually coming down. No, you're still up 6%, and you're still up 3%. Collectively, you are up overall 18%, according to this analysis. This is from my friend uh, Steve Moore, who we got to get back on the show. I, I love Steve because he's just a brilliant economist and he was an advisor to Trump. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why. I mean, Trump's pretty smart on the economy. But this is one of the reasons why we actually saw such good things coming out um, of 
the Trump administration from an economic policy standpoint. Anyway, it, it, it's it, he's calling it the real Biden inflation rate. The official rise in the consumer price index for Biden's first three years in office is 18 percent. Woo! It's the worst three year performance since Jimmy Carter years. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. But then he says, but the actual price increases for basic necessities that nearly every single family pays is actually much higher than that since Biden took office. And then he breaks it down and you see rent is up 19.5%. Groceries is up 21.1%. You see energy is up 32.3%. Gas is up 34.6%. And here's a doozy for you. Housing, mortgage payments up 66 0.5%. People are paying 66.5% more for their mortgage payment every single month than they were during Trump. So don't tell me inflation is coming down, okay? I'm sick of that line. I'm really sick of it because it's not. And this is why everyday Americans see through every single bit of it. A shout out to our friends over at LegacyPMInvestments.com. If you're worried about inflation, as clearly I am, you might look at diversification strategies. One of those strategies for a lot of people is gold. And gold is one of those things that, you know, hopefully historically keeps it, has in the past always kept its value. And you hope that it continues to do that. I think so. I mean, it's one of the reasons why I invest in gold. But uh, you, you do your own due diligence. Call these guys, 1-866-589-0560, 1-866-589-0560. And they can help walk you through it because this might be a way for you to help hedge some of this inflation. Even though the market's at all-time highs there on the NASDAQ, I just am a big believer in diversification. I'm going to have more to say on that, by the way, in the coming weeks. I actually have some very, very special news that I want to share with you on that because I think it's important that we all sort of arm ourselves with all of these diversification strategies. I'm laughing at one of you who says, buy Lockheed Martin. I just showed you a chart the other day. Ever since 2014, since the maiden revolution, since... The CIA put its special op there in Ukraine. What do you know? Lockheed Martin's been doing pretty well, better than the S&P 500, actually. Northrop Grumman, same story. So yeah, maybe military stocks are the way to go. I hate thinking that way, but that is, uh, that's part of it. I see we get some Bitcoin fans. I, I, Pat, thank you. I appreciate that. That is very kind. Same, uh, same to you, Crypto Bits. I, I, I love hearing that. Hey, I'll never turn down a compliment. David, I'm sorry to hear that. I know, inflation's killing everyone, right? Your apartment has gone up 60% in three years? You gotta talk to your landlord, buddy, because you know what? Rents overall, they've gone up 19.5%. So just under 20%. Mortgages have gone up 66. But if you're renting, I mean, it stinks because overall up nearly 20%, 19.5%. But you gotta talk to your landlord. I'd start looking because uh, you need some leverage there. They're, they're really, really socking it to you. 20 bucks for a combo meal, Greg writes, at McDonald's right now. I know, no kidding. I told the kids, no more Uber Eats. <laughs> because not only do you pay the 20 bucks for the McDonald's combo meal, but then they tack on all these crazy delivery charges. Netflix announcing today that it is upping its prices again. In other words, we're in an inflationary environment and you can slice and dice it any way you want, Joe Biden and company. Reality is here. Prices are going up and they're going to continue to go up. And here's where it hurts. I, I don't know if Drew has this chart. I, um, I use it probably too often. He's probably tucked it away. But if you have it, Drew, you're welcome to throw it up. Wages versus, this is real wages, wages versus inflation. Okay, so when you look at what people are actually earning versus inflation, this is why it hurts so badly, because you know what? We are getting killed on that front. Biden versus Trump, when it comes to income growth, guess what? We did so much better during the Trump administration because those were economic policies that actually did help us. I think he does have it. If you do, let's throw it up there. These are wages or income rather under Biden versus Donald Trump. And what you see is Trump here, Biden there. You see that chart? I mean, that explains everything you need to know right there. Between 2021 and 2023, you look at Biden, what he has accomplished, which is frankly pretty darn pathetic. So when he says he's improving, I mean, oh yeah, because you sunk us way down and now you're improving. I mean, think about what Trump went through, the, the entire shutdown of the economy, and he still comes out ahead here. So I don't think it's that hard. I, I think that you lower taxes so that people can keep more of what they earn. That helps to unleash the sort of 
natural instincts of the great American economy. You, you get rid of some of this bureaucracy and you create positive, smart trade agreements with other countries that don't penalize American workers and American goods, right? Case closed. Maybe I should be Treasury Secretary <laughs> or head of the Federal Reserve. They need some help over there. Hey, listen, it's great to see all you guys. I thank you. I encourage you to subscribe. Go over and check out the podcast on Apple, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you guys get your podcast. Spotify, we're there too. Leave a review if you can. That all helps. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow.